Hey there and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by and if you're a subscriber, thanks so much for continuing to tune in to my videos. So I've been thinking a lot, um, especially making my last video on apps for women that I think, in my opinion, are really good. It got me thinking about my housekeeping slash cleaning business days, and um, I have a lot of stories. A lot of them are, you know, pretty funny, and some of them are kind of horror stories. And for today's video, I decided why not make a video detailing the housekeeping process. I used to be a housekeeping manager, but I also worked my way up from being a 17 year old housekeeper when I was in high school to being an inspector, supervisor, and um, doing all of that during my college years, and then eventually making my way up to housekeeping manager at a hotel resort casino in Black Hawk, Colorado, where I managed over 100 employees and I oversaw over 500 rooms. That place was wild. I mean, there was, there was anything from the treatment of the employees to some like drug dealing going on, prostitution, there were stealing, harassment, racism, like this could be a whole freaking TV show. Maybe one day it will. So I wanted to share with you guys how to know if your hotel room, motel room is actually clean and what goes on behind the scenes. And I also wanted to share some of my secrets and things that I have experienced and observed in my previous roles within hospitality. So let's get into it. So what is housekeeping? Housekeeping stereotypically is a job that is not glamorous it's a job that is looked down on by everybody and let's not pretend that you probably have to. It's a job that most people don't want because it can be really hard, humiliating, and not pay very well. So who ends up making up the majority of housekeeping roles? Pretty much anybody who doesn't have any sort of like schooling, and this is just the majority. English is maybe very limited, and they're just, they're people who can't get a higher paying job in any other area because they just don't have that skill or they recently migrated to the US. Their documented status may be a little uncertain. A lot of people do end up working a fake social security number and uh, it's very common and want to work. So housekeeping has this sort of like huge demand, but a high, high turnover rate. So they're not very good at catching these discrepancies. So they either will let it pass knowingly or they just didn't put the time and effort maybe because they're understaffed or something to actually investigate. Good housekeepers are some of the hardest working people out there. Underappreciated, undervalued, exploited, overworked, underpaid, harassed. They really are doing an essential part of a job um, that no one really wants to do. And even if you claim that, you know, people are stealing jobs or whatever, like this type of job is so, can be so demeaning. So it's a community of people who just want to work, work hard, make their money, take care of their families, you know. And then there's also people who just really enjoy cleaning and have a really good time and maybe to them the type of money that they end up making is good enough and that's fine. They don't really like to take on a lot of responsibility because they want a stress-free life, which is... <laughs> sounds amazing. They can just leave everything at the job, go home, relax, take care of their family, or just take care of themselves and, you know, do their hobbies or whatever, and then just move on. There's nothing wrong with that. If anything, it sounds, it sounds really nice. The hospitality industry is huge. I mean, the hospitality industry brings in billions of dollars each year in this country. And you can imagine how much it's bringing in in other countries that their main source of like economy is tourism. Anybody who's traveled in this country has, has depended on motels, 
hotels. If you are vacationing, you tend to stay at a hotel. A lot of these hotels turn into resorts in popular tourist destinations and other ones really depend on what the economy is. So they will accommodate and mirror what that economy is. So Las Vegas, gambling, casinos. Colorado, you have a lot of skiing, snowboarding. So places like Steamboat Springs will accommodate that economy, that industry. We all know a sketchy motel or hotel when we see it. And you can only guess, and your guess is probably right, what type of quality their housekeeping department is going to bring, and it's usually very low. And then you'll go to places like Steamboat Springs that have a lot of wealth because people from all over the world are coming to go ski and snowboard and are spending a lot of money. So you'll have timeshares, you'll have resorts, condo style hotels. Is that a, a thing? Is that how you say it? I think so. Or just like your typical hotels and they tend to have a higher quality of cleaning. But that may not be the case as in my experience, it really doesn't matter how much money a place has because they're all at risk for having very low housekeeping cleaning quality. Why? because humans make mistakes, humans cut corners, and humans are the ones that are cleaning. They're the ones that are inspecting, and they're the ones that are feeling the pressure to sell the room, sell it before a deadline. They have a time limit. Housekeepers don't have the best training, and there's a couple of reasons in, in my experience why that is the case. First of all, you have a high turnover rate, so you're constantly hiring, firing, people are quitting, and rotating. The demand is so high. A lot of places end up bringing people in from other countries and they may stay here temporarily and then they leave. It costs money to train, especially when you are operating at a day by day basis and you have deadlines and you have rooms to fill and you have pressure from all areas of the hotel. So it's really hard to train people because you want them to just jump in and do the job right away. This is a huge disservice for everybody involved, not just the guest, but the housekeeper, because a lot of them end up getting burnt out or they, they see how demeaning and just not worth it this job can be, so they leave. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you have seen the housekeeping cart. This cart at first glance is usually parked in the hallway and um, has toilet paper, toiletries, um, you know, your little shampoos, lotions, conditioners, bar soaps, coffee, extra linen, extra towels, you name it. The housekeeping cart is so essential. It's so important for housekeepers and how they're going to function every single day. A lot a lot of times these housekeeping carts are understocked. They don't have enough of anything and it actually makes the job super hard. So you'll have a lot of housekeepers who get into arguments and fights. It's so petty, but it makes sense because those are the tools. They may not even have enough rags to clean and wipe surfaces correctly. Forget about it. So when a housekeeper comes in that day, it's usually very early. They may or may not have time for a morning meeting with management and with the rest of the staff to go over important details. It may just be like a five to 10 minute meeting that's pretty rushed and they'll talk about how many um, people are coming in that day, how many people are staying, and how many people are leaving. Super important. They may have updates on laundry situations, so not enough of this or we're missing that, or inventory updates. And you might have a couple of newcomers in the crowd as well who have no idea what <laughs> anything means and they'll be training with one of the housekeepers who's been there the longest or something. They don't like it. The hotel room. What does it consist of? Well, you have your little hallway, a closet where you put your stuff. It has hangers. It may have a rack for your luggage to go on. Um, it'll have a bathroom. The bathroom will have either a shower, a tub, a toilet, 
sink, typical things. Depending on the type of room that you booked, it'll be, you know, it'll be a king bed or a double, two queen beds, or I think that's it, at least for the standard room. And for resorts that have like condo style setups, you may have a couple of rooms, a full kitchen, a living room, a patio. It gets really fancy. A couple of bathrooms, really depends. It could have, you know, full amenities, dishes, fancy stuff like appliances. It really depends. I'll be talking about just the standard room though. So you walk in, you set your luggage on the luggage rack because you are smart and you know not to put it on the floor or not to put it on top of the bed. You walk into the restroom and it's looking, smelling, okay. Little did you know that just an hour before, a very stressed out housekeeper was finishing up the details. Housekeepers get a combination of maybe a Windex or like a universal multi-surface cleaner that's been diluted so many times you can't really tell if it's doing its job anymore. And maybe bleach? Maybe. They may have a toilet brush that's been used so many times in different bathrooms that it's starting to look more like a chimney brush than a toilet brush. They'll have maybe a bag of clean rags that are dry maybe a vacuum, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So how do they clean the bathroom? They'll start maybe spraying the shower, the tub, wiping it down. They'll use the same rag to spray down the sink, the counter space, the mirror. They'll use the same rag. If you have one of those bathrooms that has the glass drinking cups, they may just run those cups under a little bit of the same leftover soap from that little bar soap and water, and then they may wipe it with the same rag if it's not too moist. And then they'll scrub the toilet, spray it. They may use the same rag and then using the same rag because by this time it's pretty pretty wet, they'll probably use it to mop the floor. That's it. Did you know that if the toilet paper still has a lot of toilet paper sheets, they will use that same toilet paper roll for the next guest. If some of those little toiletries, so the conditioner, the shampoo, the lotion, if they haven't been touched or they're still kind of full, they'll use them for the next guest. If some of the towels that are folded up look clean, look dry, they will also use those for the next guest. So I would recommend if you are staying at a hotel room and they have the glass drinking cups to not use those. Use the paper ones. Make sure that the plastic hasn't been ripped apart. Okay, so you're moving on to the hallway and into the area with the bed and the chair. There's a mini fridge, there's a microwave, and there's a TV. And it's looking, it's looking okay. The floor, it does look like it wasn't vacuumed that well. But at first glance, if you weren't paying attention, it would pass. Mm. But then you go over to the bed and you notice that the duvet cover has a little rip and next to it, it has a little teeny tiny stain. Yeah. You don't wanna make a fuss so you don't say anything. <laughs> so what happens in the housekeeping process when they are making the bed? The only things that are changed when housekeepers make a bed are the pillowcases, the fitted sheet, the sheet, and maybe a blanket, but those really thin microfiber blankets. Otherwise, the very top blanket is not changed at all, or the pillows themselves. Did you know that most hotels don't replace the top blanket for up to a year? So the only other time that housekeeping may be changing those blankets or covers is if you have some sort of biohazard waste human shit, human other stuff, vomiting, blood, bed bugs, those types of things. That may be the only time they're actually taking them out of the room. So in that case, if there is any type of biohazard waste that's been on it, they are supposed to treat that room very carefully. So they'll go in and they will get all of the linen blankets, put it in a biohazard waste bag, seal it up, and in most cases they will also 
get rid of the mattress, but some don't. And yes, it's actually pretty common to find people who have passed away in hotel rooms. And it's also very common to find other biohazard waste crime scenes, as I like to call them. Um, and I will only give you, I will let your imagination fill in the gaps about what that may be. And then bed bugs. So if a hotel is lucky enough to detect the bed bugs before a guest enters that bedroom, it'll look something like this. You will either have a housekeeper who notices a, an actual bed bug on the bed or somewhere around the bed and they'll report it. And then someone will come in, either a manager, I had to do this a couple of times, and inspect the mattress seams for any evidence of bed bug poop. So what that usually looks like is brown spots that are like sprinkled around the mattress seams. And that's when you know that bed bugs have been living there and reproducing and unfortunately feeding off of blood. Yeah. And really, bed bugs, they happen more often than we think about. It's very common. Also, another normal process is for hotel rooms to put the two bedrooms that are next to the infected room out of order, and then they will also put the bedroom upstairs and the bedroom downstairs if they have multiple floors out of order so that they can treat that bedroom. So now you have the middle room that's infected the other one, the other one, the top and the bottom, all out of order. Unfortunately, some hotels don't do that and then they risk the other bedrooms getting infected through the walls and infecting the guests. And then the guests risk taking those bed bugs home, which I can imagine is a nightmare. What are bed bugs? They're disgusting, that's what they are. But bed bugs are small, reddish brown, parasitic insects that bite our skin to feed off of our blood. And they'll cause red spots all around the areas that they bit, which causes in most people just an intense itchiness and in others it could cause other medical problems. And you can have those little spots on your face, your legs, your arms, your hands, your stomach, your neck, really whatever was exposed and how hungry they were. It's disgusting. Bed bugs hide in the very small crevices of mattresses, box springs, bed frames, headboards, or objects near the bed. So maybe the nightstand or a chair, or it could even go as far as the openings of cracked wallpaper. So I kind of gave you an idea of what that looks like. How can you as the guest check for bed bugs? The easiest way to do that is to uncover the linen or take it off of the bed and expose the mattress on its side and then check the mattress side on the seams again to see if there are brown spots sprinkled around it. And most of the time you'll also find bed bug eggs or tiny, tiny bed bug babies. Ugh. I don't wanna say babies, that humanizes them. Um, or you might just see some crawling around saying, hello, thank you for your blood. And if that happens, call front desk, let them know, gather your stuff and get out of there. And that's also why we don't place our luggage on the floor or on the bed, because you could have those nasty bed bugs crawling around and they'll crawl on to your luggage and then you'll take it home and you'll adopt it and it'll feed off of your blood and then reproduce. So now you know. How can you tell if your bed was actually cleaned though? If the linen was actually changed? Well, here are some of my tips. Housekeepers, the bad ones, they'll try to cut corners and a lot of times they are under pressure to clean a room in a limited amount of time, which is very unrealistic. And they're under pressure ultimately by front desk and their managers because hotels survive off of selling rooms, right? Um, having a full house. However, everything works as a cycle. What do I mean by that? Say that you book a room and you know you're only gonna be there for a day, for a night. You get there at 
2 p.m. You were a little bit early. Most housekeeping departments do not finish cleaning all of the rooms, most of them, until about 4 or 5 p.m., depending on how busy it is. If it's a hotel, resort style place, it may not even be until later. And we know that most hotels have a check-in time of about 3 p.m. It's for the same reason, because housekeepers have so many rooms to clean and they can only be there for a limited amount of time. So you check in, you have to wait because your room, the specific room that you booked, a double queen bed, non-smoking, isn't ready. That's because somebody is cleaning it. And that's also because some other guest didn't leave their room until 1 p.m. Even though checkout time was 11 a.m. So meaning that now the process in the housekeeper is behind. So you're waiting there, finally, after an hour, you get to go to your room. So then you're only there for a night. You end up sleeping in the next day, and even though you placed a do not disturb sign outside of your door, you hear housekeeping, vacuuming, opening doors, knocking on doors, and they accidentally knock on yours. Was it accidental? No. They're just in a rush. They're under pressure to get you out because they know if you end up leaving at 11, that's already too late and they're behind. Even though checkout time is 11, it already places them behind schedule. So long story short, it's actually really important for you to leave as early as you can and to let front desk know when you left so that they can tell housekeeping and update them and then they can get started cleaning earlier so then that doesn't disrupt the cycle of housekeeping. Does that make sense? I got off on a tangent, I realized, and now I don't know what I was talking about. Mm. How can you tell if your bed has actually been changed? The pillowcases will have a clean smell. They will be fluffed up and they will have very fresh looking folding lines on them. That's either caused by the laundry machine, which folds automatically, or by the laundry person that's folding the pillowcases themselves. You'll know if they haven't been changed if they look kind of loose and they smell either they have a strong smell like some greasy person with their greasy head slept on it or they won't really smell like anything and they'll have they won't have any fresh folding lines and you'll know you know when you see it when you uncover the top blanket if your bed was changed, you'll know because the sheet on top is going to be folded neatly all the way to the foot of the bed and tucked under the mattress. And you'll know if it wasn't changed because most of the time there will be pieces of linen and crumbs at the foot of the bed, meaning that somebody slept on that and they had crusty, nasty feet and maybe they were eating a cookie or Cheetos and somehow in the middle of the night they managed to get those crumbs at the bottom of their feet at the bottom of the bed. I don't know, how, I don't know why that happens. How does that happen? I don't know. So really that's how you can tell that your bed was changed. There might be a housekeeper out there who's so good at making those slept on sheets look like they were new, but nine out of 10 times, I could usually tell if that was the case. Okay, so now you're looking around the room and you're like, hey, I'm gonna sit down, watch some TV. Hmm. What's in the fridge? Two mini bottles of water. Okay, I might pop in this frozen dinner that I got into the microwave while I watch reruns of Friends or whatever people are doing or watching porn. I don't know what they do. So most rooms actually don't get vacuumed properly. And most of the time, housekeepers are doing what is called spot cleaning, meaning they're picking up obvious things off of the floor with their hands. If you see a Cheeto, pick it up, put it in the garbage. You see a couple of other crumbs, eh, looks good. That is spot cleaning. Most vacuums that are actually working in housekeeping departments don't get cleaned, and most of them are so old that they're still using the vacuum bags. Those don't get replaced. 
Most furniture or curtains don't get dusted, don't get cleaned. Most fridges and microwaves, they may be cleaned or wiped down with that same rag. Remember the rag? Or another rag that's just been used around the same spots. It's the only rag that they've been using around the bed area. And then again, if you have a room that has a mini fridge and sometimes they put in mini bottles of water, if they look full, they won't be replaced. If you have a coffee maker, I would say five out of 10 times that coffee maker is not emptied and it is not cleaned. So use at your own risk. I would not advise that you do though. Okay, so you may be thinking, who approves these rooms to be cleaned before they are being sold? And again, it's all part of the cycle of housekeeping. Those rooms, when they are cleaned, housekeepers will notify their dispatch front desk, so the housekeeping manager or supervisor, that they were cleaned, signaling for the supervisor or the inspector or the manager to come and inspect it. And in some cases, if they're short staffed, even the front desk will come and inspect it. And yes, I know what you're thinking, front desk has no experience in inspecting rooms. So if you have a supervisor or inspector who has a list of rooms that are ready to be inspected, they they are also on an even tighter deadline because now it's 3 p.m. and guests have arrived and they really need to seal the approval for all of these rooms. They need to make sure that all of these rooms are clean so that they can tell front desk because people are getting antsy people are checking in. So they'll go in quickly into the room. They'll smell it. Does it smell nice? Okay. They'll pop into the bathroom. Does it look good? Okay. They'll pop into the bed area. Does it look good? Yes. Open the fridge. They have water in there. The bed looks okay. The curtains, maybe they straighten them out. The floor, fine. They may take about five minutes to just inspect the room and then they'll give it an approval to be sold. So they really don't spend what would be the correct amount of time to actually inspect a room. And so a lot of places, they'll go without knowing that a lot of issues actually existed in that room and it wasn't properly cleaned. And this happens a lot. Then you'll have guests who are angry and they'll call front desk and they'll tell them about the issues that they found and then it's just a nightmare for everybody. But I mean, especially the guests, you spent money to ensure that your room was clean and ready. I get it. Housekeeping is just such a business. And unfortunately, people don't give a shit. And meaning people in higher positions. They don't know what housekeeping actually has to go through. They don't know how to properly clean a room. They don't know how to disinfect it. And they don't know, they don't know the proper amount of time that it takes to clean it well. It's a business. And I think this also contributes to a lot of people just quitting those jobs because there's just such a high demand, little money, little respect, little to no benefits in just a really stressful situation. I mean, who wants to do that? I get it. And I'm hoping that out of everything that happened these last two years, that maybe the industry will get better. I know that in certain areas um, or certain hotels, there has been a huge increase in wages for housekeepers, which is awesome. Um, and the fact that guests don't really want housekeepers to come in and do touch ups to their rooms or any of that because of what's happening. That actually saves a lot of time and effort and it makes sure that both the guest and the housekeeper are safe. So maybe things are changing for the good. But with all that being said, now you know the next time that you end up booking a room in a hotel or hotel casino, you never know, now you have an idea of what happens behind the scenes and how to do a quick check to make sure that you're room is okay. And I'll leave you with this. If you are nice or a decent person, the best thing you can do to support your housekeeper is to leave them a tip and I would suggest 10 to $20 and to give it to them yourself. So if you catch them outside organizing their housekeeping cart, give that to them because what ends up happening a lot of times is if you leave it in the room, someone else who's not the housekeeper, so it could be a maintenance person or 
an inspector or sometimes front desk might go in there, see the money, no one's looking, and they'll take it. And that's really sad. Another thing that you can do is strip the bed yourself. I know this is a lot of work and like I said, it's up to you if you wanna do this. So pull out the pillowcases, the sheets, the fitted sheet, and place them on the floor or place them in the tub along with the dirty used up towels. And this actually makes sure that the bed and the towels are going to be properly changed and cleaned. And it also helps the housekeeper because it takes time to strip down a bed and it takes time to gather the dirty towels and the sheets so that they can take it down to laundry. So that's what I would do. If you don't have money for a tip, then you can help them strip down the bed and the dirty towels. So that's about it. Um, I know this video is kind of different, but I don't really have like a set theme for my channel, but it is gonna be a lot of my experience, some personal growth tips, and I'm gonna throw in some other videos that are different just to keep you on your toes. And again, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, like, recommend it, share it, watch it while you're taking a dump. <laughs> But what I do care about is your support and if you have any ideas about another topic that falls in line with these topics, uh, send me a message or comment and that's about it. I'll see you when I see you. Bye.